Welcome to The Word of the Lord Endures Forever with Pastor Will Whedon. And the word rendered to accomplish his work can also be translated to finish his work. Same verb as in chapter 19. It is finished to tell us that. When he finished his work of redemption on the same day that he finished his work of creation, a Friday. The Word of the Lord Endures Forever is a daily, verse-by-verse Bible study with the church, past and present. Pastor Whedon is leading us in a study of the Gospel of John. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. He exposed the wound of her heart, and he gently healed it, suggesting to her that he was himself the one that she and everyone has really been waiting for. He was the bridegroom come in the flesh, the one whose love fails not and will never let her or anyone down. But their intense exchange is about to be interrupted. We continue a reading from John chapter 4, beginning at the 27th verse. Just then his disciples came back. They marveled that he was speaking with a woman, but no one said, What do you seek? Or why are you talking with her? So the woman left her water jar and went away into the town and said to the people, Come, see a man who told me all that I ever did. Can this be the Christ? They went out of the town and were coming to him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, saying, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, Has anyone brought him something to eat? Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. Do you not say, there are yet four months, then comes the harvest? Look, I tell you, lift up your eyes and see that the fields are white for harvest. Already the one who reaps is receiving wages and gathering fruit for eternal life, so that the sower and the reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true. One sows and another reaps. So I sent you to reap that for which you did not labor. Others have labored, and you have entered into their labor. Many Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me all that I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them, and he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, is no longer because of what you said that we believe, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this is indeed the Savior of the world. Let us pray. Blessed Lord, since you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest them, that by patience and comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which you've given us in our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Ready to dig in? Just then his disciples came back. They marveled that he was talking with the woman, but no one said, what do you seek? Or why are you talking with her? Now, it would have been an unthinkable thing for a self-respecting rabbi to welcome a woman disciple. And yet Jesus appears to have done just that, not only in this instance, even more with the women who followed him about and provided for him and his twelve whatever they could from their means. We all but forget how countercultural Jesus really was on these matters. And even the disciples have a hard time wrapping their minds around it. You can see the furtive glances they give each other. Why on earth is he talking to a woman, written plain as day on their faces? And yet they've learned this much in their time with him. He is the master. He is the Lord. He does what he does. And they're not in a position to challenge him on what he does, even when it seemed like an unreasonable thing to do. So the woman left her water jar and went away into the town and said to the people, Come and see a man who told me all that I ever did. Can this be the Christ? They went out of the town and were coming to him. 
John never misses the little detail. She leaves her jar. Do you get it? She's not concerned anymore with bodily need. She's got the living water. She's found the Messiah, the Savior. But to have Jesus as your Savior in John's Gospel always ends up with you inviting others into the joy you've just tasted. Like it says in Psalm 34, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who trusts in him. So she magnifies the Lord, praises him to her townsfolk. St. Cyril of Alexandria, great teacher of the 4th century, he wrote of her, And right away, she, exercising love, the fairest of all virtues, and neighborly affection, diligently proclaims to others also the good which appeared to her, hastening quickly into the city. For probably the Savior was telling her and secretly whispering in her mind, Freely you have received really give. And did you catch the same invite we've heard again and again? Come and see. Come and see a man who told me all I ever did. And they were thinking to themselves, hmm, some tale that must have been. And she doesn't tell them he's the Christ. He's told her that. But she invites them to explore it on their own. Can this be the Christ? Come and check it out. And they did. They began to stream from the town to the well, where Jesus and his disciples were having a chat. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging him, saying, Rabbi, eat. But he said to them, I have food to eat that you do not know about. So the disciples said to one another, Has anyone brought him something to eat? Jesus said to them, My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. Just like Nicodemus or St. Photini misunderstood Jesus when he was speaking at one level and they were hearing on another, just so with the disciples. They wanted him to eat. You can see them standing in front of him, urging him to partake of the food they'd acquired. But meanwhile, he's looking beyond them, and I don't doubt smiling a big smile. He saw what was coming, but he needed his disciples to think different, to borrow a phrase from Apple. To think with him. They're still trying to figure out if he got food from somewhere that they weren't aware of when he lets them in on the secret. My food, my nourishment, what satisfies me, what strengthens me is this. Doing the will of him who sent me. Accomplishing his work. The will of him who sent me should chime in with the words from chapter 6, verse 39 and following, And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose none of those whom he has given me, but raise them up at the last day, because the will of God is that whoever looks on the Son and believes in him should have eternal life. His work, then, is drawing people to himself to look upon him as the Son sent to give eternal life, as the Savior. And when people are doing that, that's the food that nourishes, satisfies, and strengthens him. And the word rendered to accomplish his work can also be translated to finish his work. Same verb as in chapter 19. It is finished, to tell us that. When he finished his work of redemption on the same day that he finished his work of creation, a Friday. Maybe by now, the disciples have noticed the direction he was looking, but just in case they haven't, he goes on, do you not say there are yet four months? Then comes the harvest. Look, I tell you, lift up your eyes and see that the fields are white for harvest. Already the one who reaps is receiving wages and gathering fruit for eternal life, so that the sower and the reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you did not labor. Others have labored, and you have entered into their labor. Lift up your eyes. That is, see the Samaritan village emptying out as people come to see me and hear me and believe in me. Just like the food was spiritual he spoke of, so the harvest here is spiritual. The reaping of the fruits of sowing the word. The word that he spoke into St. Fotini, that she spoke to her townspeople, and that the Spirit used to stir them up 
so that they desired Jesus. And now they, the disciples, get to work with Jesus in bringing the good news to these villagers. They didn't plant the seed, but they got to reap the harvest. In the kingdom, that's the way of it. He planted the seed in the woman. She witnessed to him to her town. The disciples would help Jesus, instruct the folks who came to him from the town. Each had a part, but the grand scheme of it all is solidly in his hands alone. Back to the words he spoke to Nicodemus. The spirit blows where he wills, no calling the shots on him and how he operates. What matters is to enter into the labor at whatever point you can, sharing the joy of Jesus and inviting and introducing others to him. He takes care of the rest. Many of the Samaritans from that town believed in him because of the woman's testimony. He told me all that I ever did. So when the Samaritans came to him, they asked him to stay with them. And he stayed there two days. And many more believed because of his word. They said to the woman, It's no longer because of what you said that we believe. For we have heard for ourselves. And we know that this is indeed the Savior of the world. What did Paul say in Romans 10, 17? Faith comes from hearing, hearing from the word of Christ. St. Fotini's witness already brought some people to faith. They believed in him because of what she said, but they begged him to stay some with them, and he does. Two days he lives with them and shares his good news with them, and the fact that he, a Jew, stayed with them already embodied that the old divisions were crumbling. They're at an end. This is no mere Jewish Messiah whom they are listening to. They get it, and many more believed because of his word, and they tell her as much. It's no longer just because of what you said we believe. We've heard for ourselves. We know now this man, he is the Savior of the world. Augustine sees that as the pattern the church lives to this day. Botini is a kind of type of the church. The church goes out and makes Christ known to others by preaching the good news, and then they come and listen to him, and he brings them to faith, and they firmly believe that he is the Savior of the world. Savior of the world, as big as being the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. The term only gets used one more time in all of St. John's writings. 1 John 4 14 and 15. Significant words. Listen. And we have seen and testify that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him and he in God. Be he or she, Samaritan or Jew or rank Gentile, in Jesus we all have a Savior, for he's the Savior of the world. And when we witness to him, our witness needs to be that broad and bold. He's your Savior. He's already carried your sins to death on Calvary's tree. You can know it's true because he's the world's Savior, the Lamb who takes away the sin of the world, the bridegroom sent to bring us all home as his bride. So we all sing together, Lord, I believe we're sinners more than sands upon the ocean shore. Thou hast for all a ransom paid, for all a full atonement made. For Fotini, for those Samaritans, for you, even for me. Till next time, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Thanks for listening to The Word of the Lord Endures Forever with Pastor Will Whedon. The Word of the Lord Endures Forever is a listener-supported program. For any size gift by the end of 2019, we'll send you an autographed copy of Pastor Whedon's devotional book, Celebrating the Saints. You can donate by check. Make your check payable to The Word Endures and send it to Box 616, Collinsville, Illinois, 62234. You can also make a secure online contribution at thewordendures.org. The Word of the Lord Endures Forever is a production of LPR, Lutheran Public Radio.